Welcome to Electron Online. Now let's try a problem that's a little bit more difficult. Notice that we have two inductors. They're coupled, there's mutual coupling between them. There's two loops, but how many times do we need to deal with mutual coupling here? Hmm, well, let's take a look and see. First of all, we start with current I1. I1 will go through this inductor since there's mutual coupling. This will then set up a current in this inductor caused by I1. What will be the direction? Well, notice I1 enters on the dotted side. That means the current that's induced will enter on the other side. So we have a current that's induced in this direction. So if we set up a symbol right here, a current symbol, notice that would be positive on this side and negative on this side due to I1. All right. Now notice that I2 also goes through this inductor and there's coupling between the two inductors. Now I2 goes through this inductor. Well, it starts on this side and leaves on the dotted side. That means it's going to enter on the dotted side here and leave on the other side. So I2 will set up a coupling right here with an induced current in the opposite direction. So if we draw the symbol, current symbol here will have positive and negative due to I2. But now what we also have is I2 goes to this inductor and it's coupled with this inductor which will affect loop 2. And so what we then have, I2 goes to this inductor on, the, on this side and leaves on the dotted side. That means it's going to enter on the dotted side and leave on this side. So it sets up a current in this direction. So we set up a current symbol right here which affects this loop and that will be from negative to positive. But notice that coupling also affects I1. We have I2 going to this inductor. We'll set up um, an induced current over here relative to I1. And so since I2 enters on this side and leaves the dotted side, here this will enter the dotted side and leave the other side. So we have another one over here, which is caused by I2. And if we draw a symbol like this, Notice we have a positive and a negative as well, and it's in this direction. This is also caused by I2. So I2 causes mutual inductance in loop 2, and I2 going to this inductor causes a mutual inductance for loop 1. So now notice we have four different induced voltages that we need to account for when we do the KVL sums around each of the loops. So let's try that. Let's do KVL1. KVL1. Starting over here, going across the voltage source, and we're using the uh, conventional current, direction meaning positive charges moving, so this is a voltage rise, so it's plus 100, there's no phase angle. Here we have a voltage drop, minus 4I1. Here we have a voltage drop, but we have a negative reactance, that's negative, a negative J3 times I1. Here we have uh, a drop across here because of I1, so that would be minus uh, J6 times I1. And then we have this right here, so we have a voltage rise, which would be the current times the coupling, so it would be plus J2 times I2, because it's caused by the current of I2 going to this inductor. And let's see here, then we also have I2 going to this inductor in this direction. So when we move from here to here against the current, because the current of I2 goes in this direction, that would be a voltage rise. So plus six, uh, plus J6 uh, multiplied times I2. And all that adds up to zero. Ooh, that's, this is I1 and this is I1. Make sure I use the subscripts. All right, now let's simplify this. So that gives us 100. And then for I1, we have these three terms right here. So we have a minus J6, and we have a plus J3, and a minus 4. So it would be plus a minus 4 minus J3 for with I1. And then for I2, we have a plus 2 and a plus 6. That would be plus J8 times I2. And that adds up to zero. So that's a simplified form of that equation. Of course, we can put, well, we're about to form later. Let's do KVL2. 
All right, so let's start over here. We go around it in a clockwise direction. We go across the 5 ohm resistor that the voltage drops. That would be minus 5 times I2. And then we come here. Notice we have an induced current. We go against the current. That would be voltage drop. Uh, voltage drop that would be I2 times the coupling of J2 that would be minus uh, J2 times I2. Okay. Then we go across this inductor with the current that means a voltage drop of minus uh, J6 times I2. Then here we go across the induced current from negative to positive the voltage rise that would be I1 times the coupling that would be plus J2 times I1. Then we go across this inductor with the current, that would be a voltage drop, that would be minus J8 times I2. Then we go across the induced current from positive to negative, against the current that would be voltage drop, coupling times I2, so it would be minus J2 times I2. And then we have one more right here. Remember we have I1 going to this inductor here. Uh, we go against the current that the voltage rise, that would be plus J6 times I1. And all that adds up to zero. So now let's combine like terms. So for I2, we have a minus 2, a minus 8, a minus 16, a minus 18, and a minus 5. So it ends up with a minus 5, minus uh, J18, and that would be times I2. And for I1, we have a J2 here, and we have a J6, that's plus J8, so it would be plus J8. That's a terrible looking 8, let's try that again. 8 times I1, and all that adds up to 0. Of course, you can take care of the signs by moving things around. But so those are the two equations which give you the uh, sum of the voltages according to Kirchhoff's rules. But the key here is to understand all the mutual inductances. Notice there were four of them. And the rules, just to go over it again, if we go to this one right here, we have a mutual inductance between these two caused by I1. I1 comes in on the dotted side. That means the current induced goes in on the other side. So that would be this direction from negative to positive. I2 goes to this inductor. There's mutual inductance here. I2 goes on this side, leaves the dotted side. That means we enter the dotted side and leave this side for I2 for negative to positive. So those are the two induced directions for I1 and I2. Notice since I2 goes to this inductor, there is mutual inductance over here for loop 2. Notice that here I2 goes in on this side, comes out of the dotted side, so the induced current starts at the dotted side, comes over here, so that's the correct direction for negative to positive. And there's also coupling between I2 going to this inductor and what happens to I1 and so here we have I2 going in here on this side comes out a dotted side so that means it induces current from the dotted side comes out this side for I2 uh, affecting the voltage loop in I1 so those are the four mutual inductances you have to account for and you have to add them correctly in your loops that is how it's done